This is Cross Pollination. I'm Carrie Preston, and today I'm talking to Sonia Harris from the Bullock, Bullock Garden Project in Glassboro, New Jersey. Sonia was a special education teacher for 25 years, and in 2013, she became interested in starting a school garden at the school where she was teaching. Uh, this became an expansive project in 2015. She had a whole team of gardening superstars at the school helping her build this. And she became completely hooked and it became a very integrated part of her curriculum. She has since retired and is now helping other teachers and schools create community and school gardens at their school. In the conversation, we talk about the importance of ownership, foodscaping, and also about food insecurity and food inequity in our communities. It's a very long talk, but we get into a lot of topics. And so I really encourage you to listen to the end and uh, hear about all the amazing things that Sonia is doing. Cloud. All right, we're going, we're recording already. So I'm, this is actually just us meeting. <laughs> because I, I love it. I love yeah. it. And you're in one of my favorite, favorite places in the world. Do you, do you, do you have, have you been to Holland? I've been to Amsterdam. Okay. I, and I absolutely loved it. Did not want to leave. Like when it was time to leave, I was so sad. It so we went to um, Schiphol. Yes. Schiphol. And and um took the train to like brussels and uh brussels we stopped in brussels and somewhere else but we ended up in paris and I was supposed to be on route en route to paris let yeah. me tell you i i was sad the whole way and then i'm in paris i was like i want to go back to amsterdam <laughs> Well, i have to tell you that it might sound ironic but you're in one of my favorite places in the world which is new jersey <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You're a Jersey girl. <laughs> I am a Jersey girl, and so I was I was super excited to see all the stuff you're doing because I think Jersey oh, could okay. use some some serious Garden State upgrading. Yes, Jersey definitely can, and especially when you look at what's happening in the country. And the more I research, and I see like California has amazing programs, uh, Arizona has amazing programs um i'm trying to think there's somewhere else uh washington state amazing programs and how they are incorporating garden-based learning garden education outdoor education forest schools like north carolina i'm looking at all of this and i'm like why are we not doing this and i keep saying we're the garden state there's a reason and, why. and when you're saying like programs or do you mean like educational outreach as far as horticulture to the community to and schools yeah. yeah to to really to kids and yeah you know i've had so many people that work with who work within the green industry and they'll say oh yeah well you know there's this need in our industry not not as dying but I mean, it's not, but having young people, yeah, having young well, it's, people. It's, it's, in, it's in this uh, weird. Even place. when I went to go study horticulture, people were like, what are you going to study? <laughs> <laughs> like, why? <laughs> what? Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I don't think it's like, it's not a career that many people consider. Yes. And, um, and even that, like, not even beyond not being a career, I don't think it's even an interest that many people discover till like they're 30 something. Hey, hello. I was like 40 <laughs> and, and then was like, oh, hey, I love plants. I love all things plants. And that's what I'm going to do with my life. <laughs> and, and, so how did, how did I'm going to ask you one thing. Are you hearing my dog eat the bone in the background? Is that disturbing or can you not hear it? It's fine. I can hear it. But guess what? I have one. Okay. And trust me, when she wakes up, she's going to come in here. Okay. Well, I was like, I was like, I'll go make him quiet and give him a bone. And I'm like, no, is it working? <laughs> okay. Well, then, everyone listening will just have to deal with the dog eating the bone. <laughs> I mean, hello. This is, this is quarantine life. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> exactly. And I couldn't get my partner to go take the dog. So here we are. But so how, because you were in special, 
special ed. I was a special Did educator. You doing special ed? Kind of. But I I left my job. I retired early in 2019. October 1st, 2019 was my retirement date. Um, I had my 25 years in, in New Jersey, 25 years in, you're fully vested. Um, so I could retire and leave. I knew my pension was secure. Yeah. However, years in education is, is I, solid. right. So I, but I can't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> so That's it's not okay. like I'm getting... other things and you know, you've got that set, which right. is a nice so, thing to have because, because yeah. I tell you, horticulture is a hard way to build a pension. <laughs> It's, oh, it sure is. It sure is. So like, just, you know, knowing that and, and I knew I was going to be leaving, like, and it was so weird when I went into that school year and I was like, I was telling people, I was like, I think this is going to be my last year. And they were like, no, no, it's not. And what happened, I had like a, a back issue. And I mean, it comes from all those years of standing on concrete. Because yeah, that's yeah. what school floors are. There's there's no like a carpet, but no cushioning. Oh. Cushioning. Well, I I <laughs> I taught I taught school here for four years when I was oh. and and I and I really enjoyed it, but it was intense. It's very intense. It was intense, and and like and I and I so I did those four years, and I was like, I don't know how people do this twenty plus years, like twenty, but yeah. 25 it, it years. Was, it was, it it was, was so fast. I gardened most of my life. Teaching was more physically exhausting. <laughs> it's Which, so true. <laughs> it's so true. Let me tell you, on Fridays, I would come home on, on Fridays and people knew Fridays, don't ask me to go out on a Friday night. Don't ask me to do anything because the only thing I want to do is fr on a Friday bring my bags in because I know I'm going to have to do grading and lesson plans, plop them down, crawl into bed and just watch some mindless TV, <laughs> watch things where I don't have to think. Well, and I think it, it's because when you're teaching, you have to be on all the time, all the time. And, all the time. and I'm, I'm like in the middle of that sort of extroversion introversion thing. So like, I'm, I'm more tolerant than some, but like, even that yeah. it's like, it's full on extroversion. Oh yeah. Like we, it would be funny, like, you know, time for the kids to come in and my one teaching partner, um, Missy and I would be getting ready because I was a special ed. She was the, uh, jet ed. So we were inclusion and the bell would ring for them to come in and I'd be like, all right, dance, puppet dance. <laughs> and then yeah, you're on it. Hi everyone. And you do that for eight hours a day. Twenty five. So you're exhausted by the end of the day. You are exhausted. Then, Lunch is like gah, 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 gah. you're just eating as you go. You know, you don't really get a, a full lunch. Your prep is taken up with paperwork and phone calls and emails and you know, just. Whew. But I'm realizing your timing. Lot. So I'm I'm hearing like your own physical thing, but like. You stopped the year before COVID craziness. No. Oh, How, like, you, like, you were like, I, be I believe it <laughs> in the universe. Like I do, because when I was like, you know, I'm going to leave. And everyone was like, you're crazy. You're walking away. Like, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to wait until my 25th year actually hits. And it hit September 1st, but I didn't want to retire September 1st. Cause I wanted to retire at that higher pay. <laughs> that did, you, higher did, you, did you stop December of 2019? Uh, October, okay. October. And you oh, know, wow. <laughs> it, was, it was something. And then, you know, we're like, I said, okay, now it's building this business. It's like taking us to the next level and COVID. No, I mean, uncanny timing because not only like, oh my gosh. God, I would not have wanted to be a teacher the last like year. No, not, not only at that, all. But I think, I think a green renaissance is happening. So it is like, so you, like you, you missed all that craziness. Right. But into a zeitgeist that is like, yeah. Hey, come help. So that's perfect. But, but let's that's back because you started the Bullock Garden Project, if I'm right, in 2015. 
right? Well, it started as Bullock Children's Garden because I was teaching at the Dorothy L. Bullock Elementary School in Glassboro, in Glassboro, okay. New Jersey. So now, now, uh, where is, I know where Glassboro is, you know where Glassboro is, but maybe some non-Jersey people don't know where and what Glassboro is. So explain okay. to us Glassboro. So we are South Jersey in Gloucester County. We're in the uh, Western part, Southwestern part of the state. Um, Eastern, right? Right? Aren't you on the coast? Western part. Western. Uh, no, we're not on the coast. We're not by the shore. See, so I don't even know what this is. Because <laughs> <Where's laughs> I, I, I have a cousin, well, my cousin's wife who studied at Glasgow and she studied marine biology and I always had this idea that it was like by the coast. It's close because, you know, where the way Jersey is, no matter where you are, you're within an hour of the okay. shore. So, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's, it's weird like that. Okay. Or a it gets narrow near the bottom. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like I can go to like, you know, in an hour I can hit like four or five different beach points. Okay. So it's on so, that. My mental image, cause I'm, 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 I'm from Monmouth County. So like all that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the Southern bit, sorry, I don't know quite as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery the southern part like i it's easier to tell people like i'm closer to philadelphia so yeah. it takes me like 30 minutes to get to philly like in north jersey everyone will be like well i'm like 20 minutes outside of the city i have to relate that that way as well there's my son <laughs> that's a <the> dog <laughs> um so yeah we're uh 30 minutes outside of or 20 minutes outside of philly Okay, but, so it's much um, more Philly oriented than shore oriented. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So we're saying that people kind of get it. Like, okay, we are underneath Trenton. Um, we're closer to Atlantic City, forty five minutes outside of Atlantic City. Yeah, so, I was thinking you were closer to Atlantic City than you are. But yeah. um, okay, and are you originally from Glassboro? No, I am originally from this little town called Paulsboro. So I, I was born and raised in Paulsboro and uh, grew up, first went to college for, um, oh God, marketing and information systems management. Oh, so even the education stuff was like. Uh, yeah, I, so I was in college. I went to Lock Haven University in Pennsylvania and um, it just didn't work out for me. I, I came home with my child and not a degree. Yes. <laughs> so, Life gives us curveballs. Like right? that. Yes. Gives you curveballs. <laughs> but I was a business major and and it was funny because I was, you know, I remember going to class pregnant and, <laughs> and then when he was born, that little stroller, you know, bouncing to class. Um, but I had to take a gen ed and I took a special ed class changed everything changed everything i was i was so fascinated with special education and i kind of was going into business because my entire family my my mom and dad had a business my brother is in business like he has his own uh insurance agency um so that was so just the thing to do kind of it was the thing to do it was just like okay this is what we're going to do will be in the family business, you know? So it just reached that point where I was like, this is not what I want to do. Told mom and dad, I want to come home. You know, yeah. things with my ex wasn't working. And I was like, I, I want to come home. Came home, worked at kinder care for a year. It's like and a daycare? It was a daycare. Yeah, it's a daycare. Wait, 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 if we want so, to talk about something that's more exhausting than teaching, it might be yeah, daycare. It's... <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, I did while I was getting my, but I figured I was like, I could work here. I could also have my son there. I was a single mom, you know, living at home. And I uh, was there and teaching pre-K because I had the college credits. So I was teaching pre-K. Okay. Okay. And I actually loved it. So I was like, okay, maybe this is something that I could really do. And I started looking at colleges in the area and I found Westchester University in Pennsylvania. Um, loved it, fell in love, did the visits, talked to the counselors. They were amazing. They were like, you know, you're a single mother. There's money for you to go to school. 
And that's what happened. I went to college for special education, only special education. My so not even just education generally, like right into special ed right special away. Special education. So I literally have the training of a specialist. Um, my concentration was severe and profound disabilities. So I, you know, wanted to work with kids with behavioral disorders, and, uh, severe physical needs. Um, I never saw myself teaching in a public school. I was just straight, like, I want to teach in a special school. I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, and then life throws you curves. A student taught, uh, I had the student teach in Jersey. So we had to arrange this weird, you know, association because I was a Pennsylvania student, lived in Jersey, Jersey resident, Jersey resident, but my son was in uh, pre-K and kindergarten in Jersey. And by that time I was like, okay, <laughs> look, there's no way I'm going to get my son to school because he went to a school like a, um, like a micro school that was 40 minutes from Paulsboro, where I was living in a town called Williamstown. Amazing. I'm trying to imagine your mornings. <laughs> it was up, we were up early, hustled, get him ready, dressed and to school. And then I would drive over an hour, like an hour and a half to get to Westchester because of traffic. So I'm telling you, I would do stuff like I would study like in the car, you know, this is back in 90, I graduated in 98. So like 94 to 98, my son was born in 92. Um, <laughs> do the math. I'll be 50 this year. <laughs> like I'll be 50 this year. Um, so 50 is a great age. It's uh, yeah, I'm excited. I am so excited for it. I think if you're doing it right, this is like, you're getting into your swing at this age. It, it is. It's like, you know who you are and you don't care about anything else. You know, you're just like, you know what? I'm, I'm happy with me. Mm -hmm. I don't need anyone else's input. <laughs> so, you know, I, I did that. And then when my son turned four, he went to, um, no, it was before he went to school when he was two and three, I would actually drive to school with him because they had a daycare on campus. Then he hit four. And that's when I took him to private school. And um, so I would get him up in the mornings, get him dressed and everything, take him to school, drive the hour and a half to Westchester because traffic ugh, <laughs> was horrific. Um, going Route 322. And I would, I would stagger my classes. So I either had classes Monday, Wednesday and Friday or Tuesdays and Thursdays because I worked the other days. So yeah. I had a job working for a family who has a son who has severe um, uh, disabilities. He has several palsy. And I did his home care on my days off. And it was great because I could bring my son if he had off or anything like that. And uh, so it was a great experience. And I still had field experiences to do and, and student, all of this stuff. So when it came time for student teaching, I said, hey, my son is in school in Jersey. I have to student teach in New Jersey. Like I, you can't put me, cause they could put you 100 miles in a, this 100 mile radius of the campus. And you're like, please keep it close. And I was like, you cannot put me further out in Pennsylvania. I have to be close to Jersey. So they worked some things and put me in a school in New Jersey, Evergreen, no, West End, West End Elementary in Woodbury, New Jersey. And my co-op was this amazing teacher, Joe De Palma. And I taught in his class. I got hired from teaching in his class. Uh, the superintendent just had observed me and offered me a position before I finished. So I graduated on a Sunday and I started work on <laughs> On that on a Monday. Well, I'm, I'm sensing from you that you just you just sort of feel where you need to be and you let life just let life just take you. Like and and it's always about passion. Like I believe I've always believed in letting the universe kind of just dictate your path. I've always been I've always been a hippie. I've always been a hippie. But now I'm just like you know what I'm embracing it. 
I'm just embracing it. I'm an urban hippie. So, um, I, so I taught at this one school for 10 years and Joe, who had been my mentor during this time, he went to back to school, uh, became a principal. He was a principal, of one of the schools in the district moved to Bullock elementary in Glassboro. And I was like, if you ever need a special ed teacher, call me. And he did. <laughs> and I was like, I'm out. I'm and going to work for years later. <laughs> Yeah. So 10 years I was at uh, Evergreen and I taught 15 years at um, Bullock. But while I was at Bullock and this was like towards the end, Joe ended up retiring. And so we had a new principal. But I was there and I was teaching inclusion and we were teaching this lesson one day and it was dumb. It was just, it was literally taking tape measure and the kids had to measure like a table, measure the leg of a table, measure your friend's arm, measure a book. But we had kids who were struggling. Like I had kids on my roster who were struggling with that one-to-one -one correspondence and understanding measurement. And I just was in a meeting after school with Joe and a couple other teachers. And I looked at him and I was like, you know what? We're talking about how, how dumb this lesson was. We're all talking about this. And I was like, why don't we, why don't we do like a garden and just put like, you know, the yard sticks out there and let the kids watch. Measure the sunflower. Yeah. yeah. And have that, you know, maybe that'll help with building that number sense and transference. Like we can teach them about, you know, planting something, how far down does it have to go? And then watching. So you were like having application for the measurements because there was like right. purpose to it. Exactly. And you need to have transference. So especially in special education, any lesson that I'm looking at or that I'm modifying, I am always looking at how does this apply to real life? How can these kids transfer this information? And that's, that is my job it. as a specialist is to take what the gen ed teacher is doing, turn it into something outside of the box that meets the needs of all the kids, even the kids on the fringe and, you know, help teach that. So Joe was like, yeah, garden, go for it. Came home, e not emailed. Uh, I followed Ahmed Hassan on Facebook who had this show on the DIY network or HGTV, one of those. But it yeah, was so because I was watching yours, I, cause I Googled all your yeah. videos, a couple of videos. And he's great. I, I, I'm not in America, so I don't know if he's like very well known there but I'd never he's seen crazy. him before. Yeah, and yard crashers. So he's not on the show anymore. He doesn't, I don't even think they do that show anymore but he was the one who created the show and I was a fan. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> that I knew the garden, because let me tell you, you know, you're a Jersey girl. I was not going out with these nails, girl. And I wasn't gonna go in the dirt. When we got this house and moved to, I live in a town called Woolwich, Woolwich Township. Uh, so this puts me closer to Delaware where I live. I'm like 15 minutes. Like Vineland area? Um, not that far down. Okay. Vineland is, Vineland is like south, uh, southeast of me. Okay. So, but I'm right on the Salem County border. Okay. Like literally, if you go look at the map and look at the borders and go, oh, there's Gloucester County, there's Salem County. I'm right there. Okay. <laughs> like I can walk into Salem County. So, um, you know, got this house and it was like, all right, you know, we're, we're, we're doing good. I'm going to, I'm going to garden because we're out in farmland and my whole gardening was planting some tulips. Honey, a spider came out of the first hole I was doing. I dropped everything, <laughs> ran, was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. So there was no, there was no gardening happening. And when you had this idea for the school and you contacted Ahmed, you were still kind of in that state of mind? I had zero experience. I had no plants in my house. I was like, we had, I had green doctor came and did the lawn. We had someone come and cut the shrubs because it outsourced all that stuff all over. <laughs> yeah. Green space. And there's like an acre of land. So, you know, this is literally farmland. Like I could walk down the street and get to cows. Yeah. That's how like out this is. No experience. Ahmed answers me back 
because he was the only person that I knew that <laughs> that I followed that it was any kind of green anything. So that's why I emailed him. I was like, you know, hey, do you have like, do you ever do charity work? We would, would you come and crash our schoolyard? He was like, uh, I do but i usually do it for her. what's in this area i'm in california oh yeah so he's all so, the way in california he came all the way to california. california and then he was like look here's my number um give me a call saturday around this time you know california time um what are they uh oh wow four hours three hours three hours behind us yeah and you know give me a call so i did very quickly, he knew I knew nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> and did that endear him to want to like, help, or was he just oh, like, "Oh <laughs> man, I, let me tell you that that is my bud." Like he, he was, <laughs> he, he was like, "Okay, you, you really don't know anything," because he said, "Okay, well, tell me about what you want to do." And I did. I gave him my teacher spiel. That's what. Like, I want to measure plants. <laughs> yes, we just want to do plants and we want to do this and we want the kids to be engaged. And he goes, well, what do you want to grow? And I was like, um, like tomatoes. And he goes, why? Okay, well, why tomatoes? And I said, because we're from Jersey. That's what we do. <laughs> and he went, there is truth in that statement, though. I mean, there, there is, and you ask any Jersey, South Jersey, I mean, that's, that's where you grow tomatoes. Oh my God. You ask anyone like down here, like what, what is Jersey known for? And we will be like tomatoes and sweet white corn. Like no, immediately the, that's the three things I miss the most uh -huh. in the world because I live in like rainy cloudy land are tomatoes, sweet corn, and melons, cantaloupes. Oh my goodness. That is what we do. We have that beautiful soil. See, now I can talk about it and be like, oh, we have that beautiful soil. It's that downy soil from New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's he was like, okay, no, that's not what Jersey's known for. And I was like, yes, we are. Um, <laughs> Jersey. What was he convinced? We were, what, is he, what was he convinced Jersey was known for? He's like, he knows what our export is. And he was like, no, Jersey is known for blueberries and cranberries. And I was well, like, I was like, no, it is well, sweet no, white he... corn and tomatoes, you know? And he just was like, wow, okay. Well, what kind of flowers? And I was like, um, tulips. And he said, why? And I went, cause they're my favorite. <laughs> he was like, so you know nothing. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> like, he said, do you have a garden? I was like, no, I like, I have shrubs. I'm, and he's asking me what kind of plants I had in my yard. I'm like, I don't know, whatever the landscaper puts there. Like, so I don't know. I don't tend you, to so, have. So six years ago, you, you, you knew nothing. Nothing. Like bupkis, nothing. Like I said, I didn't have anything green around me, no plants. And I grew up, my mom always had tons of plants in the house like our windows were covered in plants she, i mean we had cherry tree in the yard uh peach tree she had a sassafras tree so you so had like, all the reasons and the environment to know stuff right i did but i never tapped into <clears throat> any of it. i i was definitely a product of you know working mom single mom how can i just do things quick easy get everything done my son is an artist so when he was young, there were a lot of art classes and, um, you know, things he was in soccer and all this other stuff. So, you know, I'm driving him to Philly. He's a high schooler and I'm taking him to Philly to um, the University of the Arts for classes. So, I mean, I was yeah, busy. It just wasn't on your radar. Wasn't on my radar at all. But I'll do anything for kids, anything for, like for helping a kid learn. I am, I always say that for teachers, like that is our addiction. Um, as people will ask like, well, why teaching? You know, you don't do this for a corner office. You don't do this for the money at all, <laughs> like, at all. You're not going to do it for that. So what is it? And I'm like, it's like this addiction. When you see the aha moment in a child, when you see that moment where they are so excited about learning 
that feeds like right now I have chills because that really feeds you. That's what keeps you going. Mm -hmm. So all of this is behind everything that I've done to this. So Ahmed sent me off with, I mean, I had one of those legal yellow tablets. I think I had like three or four pages of notes. I mean, he stayed on the phone with me and he's asking me questions. And I was like, I don't know who that is. So he's like, you need to look up this person writing down notes. You need to understand this. You need to understand this. You need to understand this. So it started my journey. And the more, like I read everything he told me to read. I researched all the people he told me to research. And then I started researching on my own because, you know, I'm an educator. I'm a nerd. I'm looking up peer reviewed articles on gardening with children. And there wasn't a lot, but what I read was really tying a lot of special education to gardening. So of course, now I am delving deeper and I'm in it. I'm learning. I got back to Ahmed within, I think it was like two weeks and, you know, message him. Just commitment because yeah. Yeah. Because I've I've designed school gardens and a lot of times people love the idea and then it. Yes. That's another thing. Yes. So, uh, you know, I, I'm like, okay, contacted him. He went, there's no way you, you did all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I did. Are you the type of person that like, when you get into something, you get like totally absorbed. Full immersion. Yeah. Full immersion. And like I said, my whole driving force is children, like children and learning is my whole driving force. That really is my passion. So as I'm learning more and I'm like, oh my gosh, like in my head, I'm thinking, okay, we can teach kids. Like I can do literacy through gardening. Oh my gosh, I can do this through gardening. It wasn't just math. It wasn't just science. Because it's really, you can teach a lot of things. You can teach absolutely everything. And I've said that to people. History. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Give me a topic and let's teach it through the the view of a garden. So as I'm learning. I don't know what you call it in English. Um, In Dutch, we call it like story context narrative learning. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it's so like narrative learning, that personal okay. learning and project-based um, learning. Yeah, and this is so, a great way to introduce a lot of that. Exactly. So I'm reading all of this stuff and it was like, that. this is 2013 now. This is not like oh, 20, this wasn't 2015. So this is, two, okay. 2013. So in 2014, um, Ahmed is doing the home show in Philly and the, the home show always takes place right before the flower show. So okay. that's like January, somewhere in January. So he's doing, he's like a featured speaker at the home show. Um, and he's doing it with a landscaper from this area from Berlin. I don't know if you'd know about Berlin that's in Camden County. I don't know Berlin though. No. Okay, so I'm um, that my, my South Jersey cred is low. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Cause I'm going to ask you like, where exactly in Monmouth are you from? Cause yeah. I, I, I'm, I get around Jersey pretty well. Yeah. So, you know, um, so we, he's like, Hey, whatever teachers. Cause we had a little, a little garden, uh, planning group. And we were like, okay, we're the little garden team and we're trying to figure things out. And none of us gardened. None of us <laughs> had experience. One teacher had a little bit. So, but uh, maybe yeah. what's nice about that is you were learning with the kids. We were. We were absolutely like taking all of this in. And it really made us feel like learning from the view of children. And, and I think the best gardening things. is experimental. It is. And I always tell people, if you haven't killed a plant, you're not a real gardener. No. You have to kill something. If you're, if you're doing it all right and you're doing it all like perfect, then, you, then, you're, yes. then you're not really. No, gardening. you have to have those mistakes. You have to, and a garden, again, a great place to teach children how mistakes happen. It's okay. Guess what? If it dies, I'm going to compost it and reuse that, you know, so. And next year your tomatoes might do great and next year they won't, but your broccoli is going to do great next year. Exactly, exactly. So we meet with Ahmed and it was like me and my my friend Donna, who also teaches with me. We met him at the home show 
and it was so great. It was just like, like meeting family, you know, it was like, oh my goodness, like it's you in person. And we ended up taking him out to dinner like that night. And he was just talking to us and he's listening to us talk. And he called me like a month later, um, you know, to, to say the passion that you guys had, he was like, that has stuck with me. Mm. He's like, and I, I throw things at you to learn and you do it. Like you're coming back with, to me with questions and, Hey, I found this. What do you know about this? And he saw my passion and he was like, I want to do this yard crasher style. <laughs> I'm going to help you. We're going to go, we're going to get together a group of horticultural superstars, green industry superstars, and we're going to come crash that space at Bullock Elementary. Okay. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening. Now, in the meantime, we change principles. So my principal retires, Joe retires, and we get this. this was is, it, is the next one just as easy going and open to it? He, you know what? He was just like, whatever because you're saying, if you're in charge of it and you make it happen go for it like i i remember when like he was first in the office and it was summer and we're like there meeting him and it was like hey um we're doing a garden thing just so you know and he was like okay because he had been the principal at the um pre-kk building so bullock is a grade one two and three building okay so he would, had just moved over and taken that position. So here he is brand new into a school and he's got this wild teacher coming up. Like we're doing a garden just so you know, not okay. asking, informing, <laughs> but let me tell you when, when we started this, I never asked anyone, could we do a garden? <laughs> I was I just, think like, this is the right way doing? though, because right. I think if you ask, then it gets like all sort of bureaucratic. And I think when do things fail in gardens in, is when you think about overthink it yes and then you try to get too many people involved yes you yes need to like go for it and then it happens yeah. and once it starts blooming and happening then people get excited exactly so and, and that was that was my approach because i knew of another teacher who had asked for a garden she had a, went to the board and they said no so I was like, this is for the kids. I'm just doing it. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to do this. When and we were like stealth and first she just planted some of these things. Yeah. yeah. Well, we weren't even, we weren't even thinking that we, cause we still didn't, I still on all this time and all my learning still had not actually put my hands into some soil. <laughs> I was, I was You're acting learning in your head as a teacher. I'm learning because I need to apply all of this that I'm learning. I need to apply it. So we're talking back and forth and you know we go from february february and the garden is being built we planned for the first weekend in may because we wanted to make sure it was past you know jersey you never know april because they wanted to do like march and we were like it you know, can, march be can be cold like we can get snow up through like the end of april and so we just figured, okay, May, May. And what was funny, it had been freezing all the way. It had been freezing up to the beginning of May. They descended on Glassboro and it was like the most perfect. Ed, Brie Arthur, Dwayne drawn from Vizex Design, Rich LaRue, who does like he's does filming and um uh production in LA. Uh Oh, man, this guy, uh, oh, your Oviedo handyman. That's his business. But his name is John and he's from, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. I feel so bad because he's the sweetest guy in the world. Um, It'll come to you. He, he was in Florida. Um, there's another woman, her name is Bev. She's a travel agent, but she was kind of like a the project coordinator. Okay, because she so she organized everyone coming inside. Right, she did all the travel stuff. Which you need. I'm, I'm getting all these emails while I'm at school, so I'm teaching and coordinating this giant build. And I still have the binder. I'm looking. It might be in my office because I'm a teacher. 
just this giant three ring binder, binder I think out of everything. four inch binders <laughs> and on it it just said Bullock Garden Project and that's where I kept all my notes because I'm, I'm one of those people I like to write things down I kept all of the notes that we did um luckily I had done all of the work on my home computer because I mean our school computers I didn't like them I had like a nice Dell at home. So I was like using my home computer. I would come home and, and just focus on the garden. And they came and March 2nd and 3rd, we actually, or May 2nd and 3rd, we went and just crashed this space at our well, school. It's amazing if you get that larger group of people who know what they're doing, what you can it, achieve in a couple of days. It was incredible. Cause Ahmed had, since he had hooked us up with the landscaper, he designed something for us. We did not get that design. We got something 10 times. Like, I mean, it was a beautiful design, but we got on a way bigger scale. Than Cause it just sort of like morphed organically in. It did. Almost. It did. So, so we the energy had, was there. We had we donated pavers. We had um, Glassboro Lumber and, um, oh my gosh, Brita Stone and all of these different, these different green businesses around the area that were just donating because they were like, oh, this is for kids. Because we started advertising it. I, you know, I'm using my social media. We're, a garden is coming. We got the kids excited, hung up a giant sign in the school. Your garden is coming. And I would see kids and be like, the garden's coming. And they were like, garden's coming. No clue what a garden was for a lot of these kids. <laughs> but it sounded um, good. It sounded like Christmas. <laughs> but it was all about hyping them up. Because remember, I originally went to school for business. So you know, how to, you know how to PR to sell it. And hype. And where the school is located, we have um, on the front of the school, it's like a nice little working class neighborhood. But the school is bordered on two sides by low income housing. And trust me, I heard a lot of, you know, there, those people are going to destroy it. So, you know, you got, you have that little, uh, I was one I'm of, convinced. I was one of it's two black beautiful. teachers at the school. What? So I was one of two black teachers at the school. And I had a lot of, a lot of my teachers who were not of the BIPOC community say, well, you know, they're going to destroy it. And I was like, no, they're not. No, they're not. But I don't think if people see that something is cared for and loved, it's right. very rare that people destroy it. But it's also ownership. That's what I mean. Like one of my big things was that's why I was like, you have to sell this to the kids. This is that middle row of cereal. When you go, you know, to the grocery stores here in the U.S., the middle row is Cocoa Puffs and Fruit Loops and Reese's Pieces cereal, whatever it is. And they do that for a reason because it's child level. And that's what they do. They sell to the kids. So they know kids are in a cart or kids are walking and everything is at their eye level. And so that's like how the they market. Stuff is there. All the sugar. If you really look, all of those things that stores want to market to kids are always at child level, at their mm -hmm. eye level. I hadn't thought about so, it. And then you look at like for adults. You know your grape nuts and your your mucilix and everything else is on the top I shelf. Buy it now that you're fifty. <laughs> all that stuff, the brand flakes, you know, <laughs> all on the top shelf, because that's what the adults are after. So I was like, no, if we sell this to the kids, they're going to they're no they'll sell it to the rest of the community. Exactly, it's going to be fine. Yeah. So you know, went through some amazing partnerships with um, like. Uh, the New Jersey Agricultural Society, um, they came down, like we did this huge pep rally on the Friday before the garden was being done. So we have all these people from across the country. We have people from around the state, um, all these different green organizations that I started learning about and connecting with and you know, just came and descended. You just and made this moment. And this event pep rally, and you can see the video. I think it's on the Bullock Garden Project website of like the story, and you can see part of this pep rally where the kids are just cheering and they're chanting "Garden, Garden." But like right before that, a couple months before that, the superintendent 
like I happened to see him at a meeting and he was like, um, what is all this talk that I'm hearing about a garden? <laughs> because remember, I never asked for approval. I was just doing it. And parents are hearing about it and I'm putting it out on social media. <laughs> and Do it and apologize then to like ask permission. And right. it. So I, at that moment, it, it was, was getting big. Like, oh my God. Like my, my stomach just dropped and I was like, oh crap, I'm going to get into trouble. You know, we but have sponsors and stuff. It's for the kids. And my feeling is if I'm going to get in trouble doing something for the kids, oh, well. So I just told him and I was like, Dr. Silverstein, and I called Dr. Dr. Silverstein. I said, this is what we're going to do. Blah, 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 blah. Planned it out, you know, telling him about it. And he's like, well, why? And I, and I started telling him you all your <laughs> because I have been studying. I'm an educator. I'm, I'm a nerd. I go full immersion. So I've been studying all of this and I'm talking to him about it. And then I find out through this conversation, he's an outdoors guy. He thinks that this is an amazing idea. So he was like playing you. He's like, hey, what's this here? I better card. Yeah. And, and then, I mean, I wasn't like, oh, while well, I'm doing it, this is my personality. Yeah, I can't imagine I, you ever being like, oh, <laughs> like I was me. And it's funny because I'm an extroverted introvert. So I do cut, like, I will talk to anyone, but I have those moments where I'm just like, I just want to sit in the corner and not be noticed. You know? <laughs> so okay, I'm not um, noticing those moments right now, but I'm sure we all have them. Yeah. You trust my mom said I came out blabbering and I, she was like, yeah, and you just never stopped. And that has been me. So I, of course I'm excited and I'm telling him about it. And I said, I know I didn't go through the proper channels, but Dr. Silverstein, I think this is a great benefit for the kids. And he said, I agree. And I think this is a great thing you're doing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like really? <laughs> oh my gosh. And let me tell you, having the support of your administration means a lot. My principal walked into this thing and was just like, whatever you need, whatever you need. Like, you know, I would go to him and be like, hey, uh, I need to do this. And he'd be like, okay whatever you need. So I was very thankful that I had a supportive administration for, for this because everyone believed in the outcome, which was the benefit for the children. So we do it. We have this. And, and can I ask a very, yeah. um, so my, my impression of America at this point is that it's kind of safety obsessed and litigation obsessed. Very much. And how, like, how did we get by that? Yeah, how much of an issue was all that? It really wasn't. And that again, goes back to my superintendent because, you know, he really sat with me and talked about it. And we brought out um, the grounds and maintenance director and looked at that space. And we just made sure that certain things weren't covered. Um, in Jersey, they're not allowed to use toxins um, in any grass space, anything around a school. So we were like, okay, the only thing we worried about were like maybe mice or anything. And we learned from Brie Arthur, who's amazing. He's amazing. We learned yeah. That, um, well, if we plant mint around all the borders, that's going to prevent mice. But with the air vents, any of the classrooms that are right there, and she was like, it'll grow and that smell will float into the classroom. Oh, that's so and nice. It did. It was, it was amazing. Like if someone would go past- And that's the type of stuff that kids actually care about. Yes. Like one of the things that I was fascinated about when I was, when I was doing sort of, when I did teaching, I did a little bit of the horticulture stuff with it. Um, right. Amsterdam has um, school gardens in what would be the equivalent of fifth and sixth grade. Right. And kids, kids are not at all interested in aesthetics. They're all about like, what does it do? What is this? But like, it's gotta right. be like, like right. functional. <laughs> and, and like, exactly. they want things they, to do stuff. Right. It's the adults. It's the adults that are the problem. So yeah. So we do this whole thing. I mean, our, our secretary of agriculture for New Jersey came down to help build. 
he was here. And I mean, that man got dirty. It's not like he was just there for photo ops. He took shovels and he's helping plant things. It was such a beautiful, a beautiful thing to see so many people come together for the sake of children, for the sake of these kids. Because also in this, all in this, and I'm learning about, okay, food insecurity, because this is another reason why schools well, have gardens. I'm glad to hear this. So I was sort of wondering about it, especially like, cause you're talking about the low income areas and, yeah. and I'm getting this idea that like, you're, the program's going further than the school and that like you're reaching out to families in Glassboro. Right. And, and I'm really like Camden is, we are like, and then people have to understand like Glassboro has Rowan University beautiful college, beautiful space. But then you have this other microcosm that's there. And that's people who are really financially hurting. It's like an urban, it has urban um, qualities in a suburb, in a college town, like unheard of, you know? So while I'm going through this and I'm still like with my first grade partner teacher, Missy, and we're, you know, one day the kids, we always took lunch, you know, roll call for lunch in the morning as we said their name and they would say like what they wanted for lunch if they were buying, if they brought their lunch, you know, or, or what, whatever. So this one little girl had said that she brought her lunch. So I'm getting the kids together and, and, you know, I'm like, okay, sweetheart, get your lunch. And she brings like one of those little tiny sugary huggy drinks mm. and she had a little bag of chips and I and I mean like a 25 cent bag of chips and I said no no baby not your snack go get your lunch and she goes this is my lunch and I was like that's not your lunch <laughs> went and got my purse walked down to uh, got my wallet walked down to the cafeteria of course with the kids and I bought her lunch I, I was like what do you want and I bought her lunch. And then that really made me start noticing the food. What are the kids eating? You were paying attention what other kids were eating. Yeah. Right. So it, it, I had this other focus and all this is while we're plan planning this garden and I'm getting to know Brie and I'm learning about foodscaping and, you know, Brie is telling me, how, you know, yes, bring in vegetables and we're going to do this and we're going to put food and, you know, edibles and ornamentals in this garden. So I'm really looking at now, what are the kids eating? And let me tell you, I got, I, I, I got called to the superintendent's office like twice because of me calling out what kids were eating. And this is like after, like a couple years after the garden had been installed, um, but it was all good. <laughs> but like calling it out, like what? Because were social you- Social media. Oh, let me, I'll, like oh, I'll get- Social media, yeah, okay. Oh yeah. Then I get I, it from did not care squeaky wheel so um yeah but it's hard because i think like well no I, I, okay i think most parents really want to do what's best they do but, they want to do what's best but they don't necessarily have the knowledge or the ability exactly so looking at that that food insecurity what i started doing is looking around like where my kids were living and both um housing developments have like the little bodegas in front and I would walk, like I walked into one and I was like, there is nothing fresh in here. Nothing. It's all junk food. I go into the other one. I think they had like maybe a couple of bananas. That was it. That was it. And, and are there supermarkets in those neighborhoods or is it just really these sort of bodegas? The, these two bodegas and then it's fast food because it's a college town. So there's pizza places. I mean, literally all around pizza places, hoagies, you know, all of this stuff, all this junk food. And the closest supermarket, if you lived in the complex that's the closest to Bullock School, like literally you can walk across the yard and get to this one complex called Hollybush. Um, if you had to walk to the grocery store, you're walking like two miles. Yeah, and that's too far. It's too far. And it's not like you can get uh, the New Jersey transit to just drop you off at the grocery store. 
Like that's not something that they do. So if you don't have the means or you need to get there, and I've seen many parents, like when you really open your eyes and you really start, that awareness comes in, you see everything. So I really started seeing like what my kids were bringing to school. And I started really noticing kids being lunch shamed. Like, you know, oh, your parent has a bill. And my partner and I would just go to lunch with our wallets. And quite a few teachers started doing that because we really started talking about like, how are they like doing this to kids? And I mean, we knew a lot of the backstories. Sometimes kids would go to lunch, like that little girl and just be like, I don't want this and order what they wanted. And it would just get billed. Parents get a bill. And sometimes these kids were doing it every day. Parents get a bill and it's like, you're being hounded like a, like a bill collector because your kid wanted to eat. And you're a parent who's just struggling to keep the freaking lights on in your house. And you've got like this, they wanted us to put letters in the kids' folders that would say like, you have a balance and your kid can't get a lunch or anything until you pay this balance. Not, like, it was horrible. No, it was I'm horrible. Kind of wondering, like, I would think like, there and should be a big line, like lunch. free lunch. And like, if you want like crazy extras, whatever, but like, right. get, but lunch like, like milk the- and something healthy, you know, like an app, just have a baseline. They were getting, you're supposed to study if you're not. They would get a cheese sandwich, cheese, bread, no, no mayo, no mustard, cheese sandwich and milk. What if you're a kid that can't eat wheat? What if you're a kid that's lactose intolerant? What if you just don't like cheese sandwiches? I mean, I'm a mom. My kid would not eat cheese sandwiches when he was little. You know, it's just not what he wanted. And now you're shaming kids for something that at first, second, and third graders, these are kids ages five to nine. Babies, they're babies. And you're telling babies that they can't eat And then I'm looking at this and I'm talking to parents. And then when I would see that, I would just reach out and be like, Hey, like I was one of those teachers. I wasn't afraid to go to your house. And, you know, we would talk to parents um, and just say, Hey, like, we've got this. We'll, We'll take care of this. And parents would just spill, spill, like what's going on. And that's when I went, okay, we have to make sure we're feeding kids. And when Brie designed that garden, when she brought in all that food to watch- Were you thinking foodscaping when you were starting? No, like, I was thinking a couple, I was thinking a couple tomato plants and some tulips and maybe a corn. I don't know. Maybe we like, define foodscaping for the people that don't know what that is. Oh my gosh. Well, that is just, it's breaking the thought of the traditional school garden or a traditional garden. So like when you landscape, your your home you know you have this beautiful property you have shrubs you have this you have that but you can actually plant things that are beautiful that can feed you so you can have you know tomatoes and peppers and nasturtiums that are growing among you know your front landscape and blueberry bushes so as you walk into the house you can just collect some of this stuff and and just go, you can have a beautiful landscape that's actually a food garden or, you know, creating that. But it's not planted as crops. Right. It's planted in a a beautiful way, but it's a lot of edible stuff. Right. So you have that mix of ornamentals and edibles. And that's what we did. That is what we did there. So after it was planted, it was so funny because the next day, everyone's gone and I was there early in the morning to just sit in the garden and look around and the teacher who was with me the day uh that I had asked the principal about doing it where she was with me in the morning we're sitting there having our coffee and I was like yeah what do we do with it now <laughs> it's the hard part is how do we keep it yeah what do we do what what do we do I don't know. Everyone's gone. What do we do? There was a lot of days of me with my phone texting Brie or FaceTiming Brie or calling Ahmed going, what is this? How do I take care of it? What is this bug? 
And I literally just had to immerse myself again. I had to get my hands dirty. So I spent that entire summer. You had gorgeous nails, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I had that Jersey girl, like long click. Oh, so this nail. is sort of like the toned down version of it. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I have to, because now, you know, I'm doing a lot of careful work and I'm, and I'm running a nonprofit. So I'm doing a lot of typing. So you can't have long claws for that. Um, so I sat with Donna and then we really started thinking about how we could, how can we embed this into our curriculum? So now we're looking at what is our district telling us that we need to do and how can we embed it? And we started doing that and we were taking the kids out. And during the summer, we would have days where we would just put on Instagram, like, Hey, Ms. Harris is going to be in the garden from nine to noon. Come on over. And they would families were coming and we were all learning this gardening process together. And then it got to a point over like the next year where the kids were just learning it naturally. And Brie would come back and do days. Like she would spend two, three days and like stay here and, and we'd go to school together and she's teaching the kids, you know, planting for fall, planting for spring, planting for summer and talking to them. And I mean, this you're girl, getting seasonality at talking in Latin. You know, kids are coming to me about like, Miss Harris, this, which cultivar is this? And I'll never forget that one day <laughs> the kid asked me cultivar. And I was like, what? <laughs> what do they mean by this? <laughs> like, and showing the picture, like, what, what are they talking about? And, um, you know, I, we were learning this all together, which is great. So I really, you know, one of the things that, that I was so proud of was the fact that, um, the families started coming over and, and harvesting. And but I, th I think what's interesting and I'm hearing is the school and you, you, you were open to that. You allowed that sense of ownership because sometimes like yeah. the gate gets closed and it's like, that's right. I refuse when people kept telling me, put up a fence. And I was like, nope, we're not putting up a fence. Um, it was vandalized once, once. And it was right after it was built. Some kids That's over 4th of me. July went in there and vandalized it. I get a call on like the 6th. You know, the, the custodian is like, you got to get down here. The garden was vandalized. There are kids, and this is over the summer. There's kids who are here and they're crying. So I'm like, okay, I'm on my way. I get down there. It's like a couple blue, a blueberry bush was pulled out. A couple tomatoes were squashed, but the children saw this and was like, who would do this to our garden? Because we had built that ownership. Yeah. And I would say all the time when the kids would be like, oh, your garden. I'm like, it's not my garden. It's your garden. And we really had that culture in the school where we said to the kids, and the principal even like bought into that and said it to the kids, like your garden, your garden. So we had a cleanup day. So the important. kids in the, in the low income housing developments in the projects, those kids created a garden patrol. And I can't remember what they called themselves, the garden keepers. That's what they called themselves. So these kids, and I mean, not just the kids who went to Bullock, older kids, younger kids. They didn't even go to the school. Kids who didn't even go to, to the school because we have- but Because a, they could go there on the weekend and not- Right. It's open for the entire community. Yeah. And these kids were coming on their bikes and they would, they would come to make sure no one on the weekends was touching the garden. And the kids found out who actually had done it, reported it to one of the school officers. This was a kid who didn't go to Bullock. He went to the other building, the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade building. They told the resource officer, the officer calls me and he's like, what do you want me to do? And I was like, I don't know, just hate, you know. Kids are just going to shame him. <laughs> kids have done this, like, just like, you know, let them know that, that you found out who it was. Not cool. Yeah. Never happened again. Yeah. And that was 2015. So in 2015, in 2015. I, I think this is the way it goes. If there's ownership and it, like, for an example, like in New York City, you have yeah. a lot of those um, movable chairs everywhere. Right. And when they first were starting that, I think it was a Metropolitan Museum of Art. 
yeah. and they were convinced that like all the chairs would be stolen. But That's the amount of money it would take to lock those chairs down and close it up yes. is more than like the f- one chair that's stolen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so it's, you know, when I said, when you put up a fence, you say, this is not for you. This isn't yours. This is like, this is ours and we don't want you here. And I was like, no, it's going to be open. And then people are like, well, what if deer come? I said, then, then deer come. This is what, this is what we have to teach our children that this is nature. There, well, and, then, and, and, and then, well, there's just such a large metaphor in this. I mean, so much. And then we, you know, we had kids who were coming and, oh, I can't go in the garden because I have my new sneakers. Too bad. Mommy shouldn't have put them on you this morning because you're getting dirty. And then they, they did. And kids, like the little girls in dresses. And, you know, we have a picture somewhere of this girl and she is out there. It's a day that Brie had come and we had the kids, um, uh, getting all of the topsoil and moving it. And she's out there in her dress and her little shoes, just digging away. And it's, it was absolutely incredible. And we started doing, uh, like the kids literally play in the garden. I ran and started running garden clubs and explain to that the garden club. Is that like through the school? Like as a teacher, I did it as an after school. Okay. Like kids that want to get involved and wanted to help take care of it. And yeah, I actually did the junior master gardening program with these kids. And because, you know, I was like, oh, I can't be a master gardener because they do all the classes during the day. So when I retired, that was the very first thing that, <laughs> that I did. But um, so, yeah, I, I became a Rutgers certified master gardener. Um, so what we started doing is having the kids vote on what do you want to grow? And they would do this during computer class. And the music teacher was doing, you know, different things with the kids based on gardening like she did this little play with the kids based on gardening the world cultures teacher would talk about you know like Cesar Chavez and the the importance that he had with farming and and farm workers and everyone everyone bought into this and because it they started teaching kids history language reading science music art everything through gardening we started noticing that um, the kids were eating healthier, of course, because I mean, I had kids that would say, can I go get cabbage out of the garden and have that with my lunch? Yeah. Cabbage? <laughs> kids asking for cabbage? Down there yeah. and, let you, and let you pick whatever cabbage you want. And they're sitting there at their lunch with cabbage leaves, eating cabbage. I had kids pulling radishes out of the, and I don't like radishes at all. I just radishes don't. are like such a satisfying plant to garden with though, because like oh, it's so fast. Like you feed them in like two weeks, you have a yes. like so, for kindergarten. And oh yeah. So we had them everywhere. And the kids would go out and just grab soil. Soil is on this. But I have now taught these kids that soil is health and it's alive and there's mm-hmm. microbes and all this stuff because I've mm-hmm. learned with them. And they're just eating it with the soil. They're like, it's okay, Miss Harris, it's warm poop. And I was like, <laughs> do what you do, kids, do what you do. Um, but because of what we were doing, and I used social media, you know, to show, and like I said, the district was great. Like we were able to, um, you know, just kind of brand it as the Bullock Children's Garden. I was able to brand that. Yeah. And like it has its own symbol. It has its own, you know. Yeah. Symbol. And um, the Bullock family, who the, the school's named after, like they were so honored for this because the school is named after the first black principal in that district. I, was, I told you I was one of two black teachers in that school, first, second, and third grade, over 500 children. And there were times that these kids went from pre-K to third grade and never had a teacher of color. Some and of these it, are the students very majority. It's it's really like a 50-50. Okay. But um why 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 are there so few black teachers at the school? That's just something that you know they've tried to increase. Um but I think I, I don't know. I don't know. And I know that they have looked at, you know how do we hire more 
uh, teachers of color and they've increased that over the years. But this is just at that time, this is just how it was. And you know, you, you have to replace teachers when they retire or when someone just resigns. So maybe that it's just was, the demographic, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't happening, but the demographics of the town were changing. Okay, I think it's and, a lot of that. So yeah, so we had, we ended up getting like a lot of kids who um, were Hispanic because we had a lot of migrant farm working children, you know, so their families were farm workers and we were getting a lot of these children. So our, the time that I was there, those 15 years, I really got to see that demographic change. And as teachers were retiring, you know, things did happen, <laughs> but it still was um, still not a really good representation of the populace, of the clientele. Um, so I really, really started looking at, you know, the kids who were having problems, the kids who were having behavioral problems, and they were a lot of our young black males that we had, first, second, third grade, having explosive episodes. That, and yeah. I, I talked to the principal and said, well, what if I did this garden club for the high flyers? That's what we call them, the high flyers, the kids who are always in the principal's office. Because that's always like something very physical. So you can use a lot of that physical energy and feel right. like so I, I gave up my lunch and I worked with these kids and we actually kind of did research. Um, we picked the top, I think there were seven kids who had been suspended, who were always in the office. I mean, real behavioral problems. And I did a special garden club with these boys and there were conditions. They had to, um, they had to meet certain goals through the week and they had to earn like certain points. And if you got those points, then you came to garden club. And when you got to come to garden club, that's when you took care of your plant. And I would tell them, I'm not going to water your plant. I'm not going to take care of it. You're responsible for this. So if you don't earn those points and you don't make it, your plant's going to die. Mm. So out of those seven kids, we only had one that didn't make it, that, that he ended up um, needing a different type of program. But six young black males learned that they could take control of something and change a course. They learned about being calm. They learned about behavior. And because of these things that we were doing and we started doing presentations and whatnot, and the word started getting out around the state, like this teacher down in South Jersey just like bum rushed the school and did this garden, didn't ask for permission. Um, my superintendent supported me like when they were, the business office was asking, well, what, what plants, how many of these plants? And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they're worth. Like, I, I can't give you an accounting for things that aren't here that I don't know about. And the superintendent was like, just, I've got it. <laughs> you know, he handled this. Um, so I started helping other teachers garden using my Bullock Garden project. And method. when the teachers meet other schools? Other schools, other schools around the state. So I did a lot of travels on my weekends to North Jersey, um, to Delaware. And these were just people who were emailing me because there were articles that were written and they just started, you know, teachers, you start hearing about things through, through different networks. And, you know, during that year, uh, the Department of Agriculture started doing this award for the best in New Jersey. And it was for school gardens and we received the very first. So I was recognized as the very first one. And what an honor. I mean, yeah. what an honor. But deserve. But when that happened, oh, thanks. And yeah. it was because of the way we just started incorporating it. And it went from our school, from the first, second, and third grade school to the seventh and eighth grade school. Like that teacher started bringing her kids over and they were working with our kids during garden club. And then they went back and they started growing their own food there. So that becomes another food hub. And then the fourth and fifth and sixth grade building wanted a garden it becomes another food hub. So what I, I think every school should have a garden. 
that is my thing. And I, all of, through all of this journey, and I was telling you about the time where I got in trouble, <laughs> um, I was moved to third grade and third graders ate last. And I started seeing the food that the third graders were getting. Cause now I am full deep in this. I am about, you know, food insecurity. I am about gardening. I had my shrubs. All of my shrubs have been torn out. The only thing I have, I have one thing left. Um, can't even think of the name of it right now, but uh, I have foodscaped my entire. I, 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 I would be disappointed if that wasn't the case. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> it's crazy. Like the, the corner where I live, there's always a lot of accidents. It, because everyone's like, oh. <laughs> I wish, I wish. No, people are just, oh. people just are driving crazy. Like okay. just it's, it's, a, it's a crazy intersection. It's a crazy intersection. I thought you were just like, everyone was stopping to see your foodscape. <laughs> oh, I, some that has happened. <laughs> I have had, been out in the garden and have had people stop and ask questions. Um, but we would have, we would have accidents here and the police officers, they call me the garden lady. They're like, okay, garden lady. And they know me, but they're like garden lady. Cause I'll bring stuff out like, oh, hey, yeah, you got that all taken care of. Here's some tomatoes. So now I am like, I'm ready to go farm status. That is what I'm looking at is actually creating a farm. I have a, a high tunnel that's wow. sitting, sitting in my driveway that has to be built once the snow is all gone. Um, you like start seedlings in there for the school projects and stuff and yeah yep and teaching like using it as a teaching space yeah so when I was a third grade teacher and now like I'm shifting and I'm seeing okay I'm not seeing the kids who get the first lunch I'm seeing the kids who get the, the last lunch and it was crap there were times that they ran out of food and the kids were able to pick whatever they want. So they were getting ice cream and potato chips and chocolate milk and- You would think they would be able to calculate how many healthy lunches they need. But they ran out of food. And during this time also, yeah. Jersey put the thing in place. I know girl, I know. And they like Jersey put the thing in place where every kid got breakfast. There was free breakfast for everyone. And there were times I'm looking at this food and especially the food service that we had was the same one that I have in my town. Now I have a lot of neighbors of affluence. Um, some of the Philadelphia Eagles and the Flyers and whatnot live in this area. I went to school with my niece, same food service. I looked at lunch and I went, are you kidding me? Like the quality I felt like I was in a restaurant. It was beautiful, beautiful, fresh produce, beautiful, fresh made sandwiches, beautiful, fresh made lunch. I'm asking them, what do you give the kids for breakfast? And I'm asking my nieces. She was like, well, we can have cereal or we can get yogurt or sometimes we can get fresh fruit. Like they'll do fruit cups. My kids were getting these stale frozen donut whole things, pop tarts, cookies sometimes. Um, because it fell within the allowance of that food pyramid. And I'm telling you. And it, none of the parents were going to complain in the same way as all those affluent parents are going to. And so the school service is like, we can get away with it here. We can get away with cheap, with cheap. So I was taking pictures and I posted it and I was tagging the company and I was like, do better. Oh, this is, this is what you got in trouble for. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Now I oh, get yeah. it. Now I get so, it. I thought you were I, like calling out like individual kids and parents, but you're calling out the food service. Okay. I called out the food service. <laughs> and so I get, I get a call from the superintendent's office. I get an email. Dr. Silverstein wants to see you. Please bring a union rep. Now I was in the union. Please and bring your union rep. Bring your union rep. So I <laughs> you know, it's not good when they're telling you that. I know. So I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, what is, so I, I emailed her back and I was like, why, what is this about? What did I do? Like, I'm thinking, what did I do? And she was like something social media. And then I knew, and I kind of was like, okay, like fine. But you I, know I, I felt totally justified. I will take this L. Like I will take this L. And so I call the president of the union and we go there and he pulls out the folder 
and he opens it and there's a printout and I literally started laughing and I was like okay and he he was like you gotta watch what you're posting please and because I mean I put it on Facebook I put it on Instagram I put it everywhere I was and he was like you really can't do this but this is a guy who knows that I don't act out of malice. Um, this is a person who has been extremely supportive of me and of what I was doing with the kids. He knew that I was not acting out of malice and he believed in this, but he also was like, you can't do that. And I was like, in no way did I disparage the district. I never mentioned the district. I talked about the food service. And I'm comparing it to what I say anything. Nothing changes. Service do. Right. So he was like, "Well, can you take it down?" And I went, "No." <laughs> I was like, "I I can't." And let me tell you, he was so nice. Like, we're all in there, and I'm kind of laughing. And I was like, "Doctor S, squeaky wheel gets the oil." And he was just like. Just don't post anymore. Like, like, don't squeak quite so loud. <laughs> and then my kids got spoiled milk. So I'm just gonna let you. <laughs> how did how what did, did you did you not say anything about the spoiled milk? <laughs> <laughs> you know me well enough at this point. <laughs> you know I totally shouted that out. Why are we getting spoiled milk? Why are my kids getting milk? That's and they were in there drinking this for breakfast. And these kids are like, it doesn't taste so great. But you have a lot of kids that, that I know, yeah. we know their only meals are what they get when they're at school. We got, as teachers, we all started getting in trouble because we weren't returning the food bags because we were keeping whatever extra food there was, knowing that when it went to the cafeteria, when that went back, they had to throw it away because once it leaves the cafeteria, it's no more good. They can't serve it to anyone else. So we were like, we're, and I mean, it wasn't just us. There was a lot of teachers. We were like, why are we just not holding the food? And this way, the kids that we knew needed it, we were giving it to them. We had trouble for it, but we were like, whatever. <laughs> we're still going to do it. It, it breaks my heart for our kids. So yeah, I get called in again. And he was like, I'm, I'm going to have to put a letter in your file. And I literally said, you can do that if you want. But I'm not taking it down and um, I'm not going to need a letter for my file. Like this is not my last stop. I, I knew, I always knew always that I was not going to retire. I wasn't going to be with that, that lifelong teacher. I've always known that. And I can't tell you how I've known it, but I've just always known that. I remember when I was in college for education and meeting with my advisor and she was like where do you see yourself in 20 years and I was like I don't know like consulting and she it was like, you gotta, like you're gonna be an educator but like, just bigger yeah. than one school right like I always wanted to do something bigger never knew what that was just knew I wanted to so as as we're going on um in 2017 because I've been helping teachers for now, like two years and it, the word is getting out and it's getting broader. So it's going to Philly and it's going to New York and people are really, you know, sharing what's going on. These other teachers and they're like, oh, well, I have a friend over here and they want help. And I was like, okay, I'll drive up. And I had been connecting with um, companies in the green industry because Brie and Ahmed originally gave me these contacts so I'm contacting these people who are like, oh, we're all about this. Yes, teach these kids. And especially teaching kids from low income areas, teaching them that, you know, hearing kids go, well, I want to be a rapper. I want to be a football player. It's like, do you realize the percentage of the kids or the people who actually make that? It's like less than 1%. Yeah, what? but I mean, it's not what kids do. I mean, when we were kids, we all wanted to be astronauts and baseball players. Like, right. like but that's- you have a lot of children that don't see any other representation of themselves. So you see a lot of African-Americans who rap, play sports, 
you know, play basketball. I this is how you, horticulture does not have a lot of African Americans. Exactly. Cause I have been to events where I'm literally like, it is just me. No, it is so, so darn uh, white. <laughs> that, yeah, it, it is. It is. And, no, and I mean, and I, I did a project. I worked at Howell Living History Farm in, um, it was in Mercer County. And oh, okay. Yeah, that was great fun after I graduated. Anyway, my winding life. Um, <laughs> and we did a project with Howell Living History Farm where we went down to Trenton and we were doing a community garden there. And this was right. in a black community. Right. And, um, and I was talking to a bunch of the guys who were in the community and they were like, they were like, we're, we're not doing this. We did this long enough. We're, we're not digging this damn garden. Right, <laughs> right. I, I think, I think there was such, I think the agricultural history of black Americans. Yes. Yes, like, exactly. And now it's time to teach a different narrative. Yeah. And I think it's important that we teach our children, especially, you know, our, our, our black children. And I do like, there's a video. If you look on my Instagram, my, I think it's my IGTV or so in Bullock Gardens. Um, it was right after the murder of George Floyd. And my social media staff was like, you really need to put something out. And I was like, I don't want to like right now. I can't you right didn't know what you wanted to say that had right. actual meaning. Right. And so we put out something and then we did like these videos about like, what's our why? Like our, the, um, our, our members of color in, in our board. Cause we have a very diverse board. And, um, so I put mine out, but what I did, I just sitting on the ground, had my phone and I started talking and in here I started crying and, and, but I'm talking about like the passion behind why I do what I do. So I've done all of that. I've set gardens up. I started a nonprofit and then I hit that point where I knew I wanted to do this for my life. I knew that I wanted to continue to educate kids, but I needed to focus on the kids in my community, the kids. Now I didn't grow up in a low income community. I grew up, I told you my parents, had them, like, no. I, I grew up like, you know, there was no question. Like after, after high school, there's college that was given, but for so many kids, like I remember kids who, black kids who were shocked when I said, well, I had to go to college to be your teacher. And they were like, you went to college? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I remember this little boy had said, black people don't go to college. I said, sweetheart, how do you think I got to be your teacher? I, you have to go to college for this. And he was like, you went to college? I'm like, yes. He's like, black people go to college? I was like, yes. I contacted the admissions council at uh, Morehouse University, which is an HBCU. And I connected him with their admissions person. They sent him a whole kit and they were like, we're sending you your welcome letter. And this is, he's in third grade at the time. And they're like, this, we're gonna be waiting for you. have this idea that black people don't go to college. Because in these communities, think about how, when we talk about systemic racism, that really is, uh, this horrible factor, this horrible outcome of systemic racism is when you see this, this downtrodden every single day and the only way out, the only things that you see in front of you are rap, sports, you know, these places where they have decided, where society has so decided where black people excel. That's your limit. That is your only goal. And it's so hard but, to imagine something beyond the limits that are shown. Right. We, so like even having, well, yeah, you just, even having Barack Obama as president huge. was something that for the kids that, I mean, they were, they couldn't process that. So being in the agricultural world and talking with kids about reconnecting with the soil. And I've heard, you know, the stories where, you know, some of our, yes, our, our, people of color, some of my, my other people in the African-American community have said, yeah, we don't do that. I'm like, why not? 
why not? They're like, there was a big deal um, when Brie came to our school and planted cotton. And I had a couple people I get say, it. How Simple. could you let her, like, how could you let her do that? Mm-hmm. And I was like, do you realize how important this is? Like kids need to see, all kids need to see this cotton plant. They need to know how sharp it is to harvest car- cotton. And how it, awful it was. But, to- <laughs> yeah. But they also need to know that it's empowering to take that back. Yeah. And it's, now you it's control. Reclaiming that. Yeah. It's reclaiming things. Right. So and like, I do get that like 50 years ago, yeah, already. and maybe right. even 20, because when I was in, in that place in Trenton, yeah, it was 22 years ago. <laughs> right, yeah. We no one ready. was ready for that. But, but now we have this different thought and now we are, we're aware about what's in our food. And which is another reason that pushed me towards this because I started getting diagnosed with all these autoimmune diseases. And I was like, what? And then uh, let me tell you, when I traveled to, when I traveled abroad, when I went to Netherlands, when I was in France, when I was in the UK. You don't have people with gluten allergies over here (laughs) or not in the same things because we're not wrap on our wheat. (laughs) I was, I could eat everything. Like all the stuff I was allergic to, I could eat. And I was talking, I was in Amsterdam um, oh God, I was at this little place that makes crepes. It was the p- most beautiful place. It was so cute. And I was sitting there and I'm at the time I was by myself. Um, the guy I was seeing was in business. Like he's was at meetings and I started talking to someone who was like, you know, uh, American. And I was like, <laughs> it was funny. Cause I went, yeah. And they were like, oh, Donald Trump. And I went, oh, I'm sorry, world. I was like, we're sorry. (laughs) But it was so funny. And she sat and talked to me and we were talking about food. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying, I was like, I have never tasted anything like this. Like even the coffee. And it was funny because the cup was so tiny. And I was like, I'm used to like this so small here, you know? And we just were talking and she was so just enlightening about, yeah, we, we don't take American food. Like, you know, talking about what, how clean the food is in Europe. And she was asking where we were going. And I was telling her, she's like, you're going to find food like this all across Europe. Like, this is what we do. Um, We don't take food from America because of um, all of the products. So of course I'm the nerd. I'm like Googling and reading as I'm like taking the the red bus tour. And, you know, as we're on the train, I'm looking this up and I'm like, wow, no wonder they don't take our food. Like I I knew our food was crap, but man, our food is crap. I said, the simple reason that the FDA is in one house, that's a problem because they can feed us food to make us sick. You need medicine. And then you're going to need more medicine because that medicine has side effects, but you still need to eat the crappy food. And if we look at what people are getting in food pantries, they get a lot of canned products. What lines the cans here in the U.S.? It's a toxin that helps increase shelf life. So the people who need fresh food the most, marginalized communities, people of color, people who don't have access, people who are getting small government assistance. Trust me, no one, I've seen what some people get. When you have $250 and you have to feed a family of four for one month, you're going to pick whatever is cheapest on your shelf. And the thing is, is what's interesting, like here, so yeah. we, have, we have markets. Yes, not which shanky, I love. We're not like shanky farmer's market for all the rich people. No, that's where you go when you're cheap and you want to get cheap vegetables. And fresh vegetables are actually cheaper here than all the processed shit. It's amazing. I go back to Jersey and I'm like, what is this yeah. insane price for yes. fresh vegetables? Like $5 for like a, a head of broccoli, a head, one. Exactly. Five I get broccoli, broccoli today for like 99 cents, you know, like. I know. I, I walked, I walked Amsterdam and I, <laughs> I went to one of the markets. I was there. I think it was like a November, December. I know it was right before Christmas. Cause it was decorated. Absolutely beautiful. Um, but I walked 
into the fresh markets and I, I go back to the hotel with all these veggies and he was like, what are you doing? I was like, I spent $2. Like I spent $2. It's not the swanky elitist thing. No, like I was in, I was in absolute shock, just in shock. So when you see this in other places and you come back here, it traveling changes your mindset. And we know that the traveling changes your mindset. So, you know, I do this thing in 2017, we start a nonprofit, me and five of my friends. And we're like, we do this in June. We get our 501 C3 status um, in like November and we open our website. We're gonna help schools. Within a week, we had 22 applications. This, from this is so around cool here. the world. So there's this interest. People want to do it. They just don't know how to start. We were and shocked. Not everyone's like as ballsy as you. Right. It was just crazy. So we're shocked and we tried, we helped all of them. And then it was like, like this, this, this worked. Like we actually did what we said. And at that time, it was just about school gardens and learning through gardening. But you know what? Like, so you're talking about food security, and that's an amazing aspect of it. Yeah. But what's also amazing as well, you were talking about the, the group of the high flyers and how yeah. they learned how to change the course of their life. So it creates responsibility. What it also right. does, though, if you want people to care about the environment. Yeah. Yes. Having this early yes, experience. Ma'am invest it they even invest they, like even if they never see yellowstone like they see the garden and it it yes. transfers yes um when i was still teaching i had a lot of parents that were like Ms. harris can you come help us build our garden because the kids wanted a garden at home and i was like of course of course yeah i'll come out so, like, okay, so this glassboro grows is that like did that grow from that this is all grown from oh so much more um so, you know, like I said, all, all of this, we started, um, I was still teaching, running the nonprofit at night. And then I get, my back goes out. I'm on bed rest for months. And I mean, they were telling me, you're not going to be able to walk. Like you're, you're heading for a wheelchair. It, it was so bad. I, it's called like adult onset scoliosis. Okay. And really they said it's a problem from people who are standing constantly on bad surfaces they see this in teachers so i was like probably okay. retail people too yeah yeah like bed rest um i had to go have like the the injections in my back i did it once i'm gonna be honest i did it once i had a horrible reaction like cr like crawled almost into the physical therapist and was like i just hurt um, but they were telling me, they were like, you have six months to a wheelchair. You have six months. If you don't change your habits and stop or like no, just, just you have six months to a wheelchair. Um, so I, I knew like I was looking at first at medically retiring. So while I was on bed rest, I'm doing Bullock Garden Project work. I'm connecting with other people. I'm still running a garden club and doing it virtually. So when I decided to retire, it was because um, 25 years were in, but Bullock Garden Project, the nonprofit, was really expanding. And we started really developing partners on a global basis. We started helping people on a global basis. And because when I was- When you saying global, like internationally, people are looking at you, how do we set Dylan, this up? The UK, Australia, Canada, um, yeah, across the globe. So uh, South Africa, Ghana, Kenya. I mean, amazing, just amazing people who we were able to help. And, you know, then also you're, I had to go internally because I'm like, okay, I can't garden the way I usually do. I have to figure this out. So then that special ed part of me kicks in and was like, first of all, I was like, I'm not going to be in a wheelchair. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to beat this. And um, I had to figure out how can I garden safely? So that just brought another, just another link into the fence. So 
pandemic hits. I retire, pandemic hits. I'm not in a wheelchair because I have used medication and I have used natural medication. And now yesterday it was now legal in Jersey. Cannabis was legal in Jersey. I had a friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I had a friend. Time, but anyway, <laughs> let's not, yeah, let's not that's, that's that's a whole track, different yeah. conversation. And let's talk, I mean, for if you want to talk about systemic racism and whatnot, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, no, that, I, we, that could be a whole conversation, but we won't have yeah. it. <laughs> so, but I was using, like, I had a friend who was like, honey, let me make you this salve to put on your back. It's going to help with the soreness. And that's what I started using. And I was like, really became interested in the health using just plants, not just cannabis, but plants to heal. So I'm like, plants heal your body. It heals your spirit. It heals your soul. It heals everything. So we're now working with Rowan University because they had this uptick, sadly, in suicides of students. With the pandemic. This is pre-pandemic. Sorry. This is pre-pandemic. Okay. Yes. So go back. And so we're talking about healing with the plants. We, we signed an agreement with Rowan. Pandemic hits. Everyone's panicking. Like, what do we do? What do we do? And I was sitting there with my crew going, we don't have anything to worry about. Like, first of all, we don't have a budget. Like we're broke. We run, we run on like my savings. That's what we were running on and working on um, with donations that we were getting from companies. Uh, I really hate like asking people for money. And I'm like, but do you have gloves? Because I have this school here in Kenya that needs gloves or this school in Ghana, they needed a water tank. So we were able to connect and get yeah. that way. So that's how we operate it. And uh, with the pandemic, seeing, seeing the tulips in Amsterdam, they were rolling them out on those big carts and they just started dumping them into a pile. And I was like, what are they doing? Like, oh my God, why are we doing this? And I was like, well, we can't do the festival. So and we're just crashing everything. You have to. Yeah. And then seeing- They did give a lot of them to the nurses in the nursing homes and stuff. But yeah, it, like, but seeing that was like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> yeah, but the world runs on logistics. It, it does. And then seeing farmers like till under their crops because they're like, well, we grow for this and this is closed. And then seeing the lines of people, because I'm in Jersey. So Jersey and New York are like the hubs at the beginning for this pandemic. I've said, I'd say I'll, I'll say, so it's so painful for me to watch because I have a lot of family and friends back in Jersey. Yeah. And I had done um, a show garden in Moscow in 2019 with a bunch of people from Bergamo, Italy. So oh, I had wow. a lot of contacts with people in Bergamo, Italy, and I watched oh. all of that unfold. And I'm trying to warn everyone in Jersey, I'm like, take this seriously. And everyone's like, ah, oh, that's there. Like, it was amazing. The levels of exceptionalism. At first, everyone was like, oh, that's yeah. China. Oh, that's Italy. Oh, that's Europe. Oh, and I'm oh like, my gosh. let me tell you, we were at the Philadelphia Flower Show. And it was like around the end of it, you know, because I was there every day. Um, I'm fr friends with Petra from Fruition Seeds. Um, so I'm, we're all hanging out and we're like, why are people wearing masks? Like what is going on? Why are people wearing masks? Yeah, but it was, was, it, like, was it February or March? This is February. Yeah, February we, was still so early. We had no idea what really was going on. Yeah. And we're like, what are, what are people doing? And I remember I went to the doctors like that week and my doctor was like, I really want you to get a flu shot because there's something nasty that's coming this way. And I was like, nah, I don't wear with kids anymore. I'm not getting it. Um, so unfortunately, like uh, the end of, yeah, end of January, like my aunt had been really sick and she had passed away and I got super sick. <laughs> Like in January. And you, do you think it was COVID? In oh, school? I'm sure it was. So, you know, I was just like, dude, I've already had the flu. I'm good, you know, whatever. 
So he was like, but I want you to do this two week quarantine. And this is, like I said, towards the end of February, I want you to do this two week quarantine. Just please don't go out. Please don't do this. Like just stay home because your, your immune system is already compromised. So I was like, all right, man, like whatever. I don't have a problem staying home. And you know, I was working from home anyway. And, uh, it hits. And what happened from seeing all of this go on, and then we just started shifting to helping people eat. So we started gleaning food from farms. Um, we started partnering with food pantries and all the time, like creating my that logistics people, so that people could get it. Right. My social media people are posting um, all of this. And we started growing. We started growing as as a as a nonprofit because now we're making these we're other connections bigger. So we're just like, oh my gosh, like so much of this ties in to what we want to do. And then George Floyd is murdered. And people really started turning their attention to, well, let's look on social media. Like, are there? black people who are in horticulture when it became all of the racism really started taking notice I like think there was an awareness at that moment rising awareness right of, of how systemic it was and it's and it's like yeah. and I think some people who are socially active like this like yeah there was a small percentage that were aware of it before but it it, it the, the percentage of people that were aware of it to that extent, it just, yes. there was this consciousness of, oh. Like the, the veil had been pulled. Yeah. And when that happened, we had a lot of people, like I had a lot of people contact me, like we didn't know that this is what you do. Like, you know, you what are you doing this for? And then I had that video where I was like, I do this for, my people i'm doing this for our children like this is what i've dedicated my life to i left a job that had a guaranteed paycheck that i had guaranteed benefits i left that job i took that leap knowing that i was not going to be able to collect my pension for 13 years i knew that i was losing my health insurance because i didn't i couldn't retire with a disability only because I was still contracting with some schools in the state of New Jersey. And if I did that, I would not have been allowed to do any work with the state because as a public school teacher, you're a state employee for a year. Okay. So I took the loss and just said, the universal provide. You just knew this is what I should be doing. I need to do. I have to take the stand. I have to make sure that the schools that are the hardest hit by poverty, they have to have gardens because we have to feed people. And, they, and teach them to feed themselves. Right. And then because I said, you take a seed, like our tagline is plant seeds grow futures because you can right. plant take that seed, plant a seed in the ground. You can grow something that feeds you, feeds your family. But- we can also teach you how to take that seed, save that seed, market that seed, sell that seed, take those plants, sell them. I mean, all the people, look, honey, I sold personally that most people will spray to get out of their yard as a weed that they don't realize this is a superfood. It's high in <laughs> all sorts of vitamins and iron. And, you know, it's one of the best things out there to eat and it's delicious. And I could sell it for 20 bucks a bundle. And our bundles were like one ounce. And we were able to sell that through the pandemic at us as Bullock Garden Project and bring money back into the organization from highbrow restaurants in Philly. Now, the good thing is they were taking, since they were, everyone was shut down, they were taking these things and they were cooking food for people. So in like Kensington in Philadelphia, the Kensington neighborhood where we were very invested, um, Camden. And so we were able to make a profit, profit. <laughs> You're able to keep things going, yeah. Keep things going, 
but um, by doing this, and we're like, if we teach kids from the hood this, yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to do all these crazy things. You can no, and you can feed yourself. And the thing is, the kids that we work with are embracing this. They want to do this. So one of the things that I'm doing this year, I'm doing in my home garden, I have a section that I am dedicating to my ancestry. Because I had, I had my ancestry done um, and it's fascinating. But I want to really focus on reclaiming the soil. And we have to do that. We have to start teaching our young people and anyone who loves to garden, who wants to garden, that we have to honor the soil we're on, this stolen land worked by stolen people. We have to make sure that we honor it and take care of it. So when you talk about, you know, caring for the earth, that's where that really comes in. So we're meeting people who really are interested in the backstory behind the land. Um, so the Glassboro Grows Project. I have chills hearing this, by the way. Like this, oh, uh, but this is the important thing. And the Glassboro Grows Project is kind of part of that. We are part of a grant with Rowan University. And they knew that one of our goals was to feed people. And through them, they were able to give us funding so we could buy supplies where we give people kits to grow food in their home. So if you live in that subsidized housing and you have a little apartment or, you know, you don't have space outside, I have done it. I have grown like this is my east facing window there. Are, you can't see it because my my Monstera <laughs> is in the way. <laughs> like I see plants. <laughs> a lot of plants. There's a lot of plants back there and a lot of things for growing. And I've grown string beans, peas, tomatoes. Enough sun in that window, or do you have like grow lamps? I have both. So I use the I use the grow lamps for the things that I know are gonna die if they get a cold breeze because there's still a little chill that comes from that window. So tomatoes will go in there sometimes. Mini bell tomatoes will grow right on those chocolate mini bells. <laughs> Uh, don't even get me started on jersey tomatoes i'll be like oh my god they grow right there on the, on the windowsill and then i just put strings in there twine stuff i got from the dollar tree i put it up there and you know can grow so i've been able to teach people you can take five dollars go to dollar tree and get everything you need to start a garden but through you don't this need a big piece of property you don't need to fancy oh. anything and you don't need to have all these like pots and you know, I can teach you how to take that Dollar Tree soil and kind of sterilize it because we don't know what's what's in that. Sterilize it, add some things to it that you have at your house to give it some extra nourishment and then grow with it. Like, I, I think that's, I think sometimes like gardening gets made into this like super complicated, you need all this does. silly equipment. And it's not, it's just like no. put the seed in the soil and- I, like, I said to someone, because I talked about how I, how I do um, part of my gardenscape, and I'm going to have to send you pictures. Um, I, I have like this large property. There's no way I can buy fencing for this because <laughs> I left my job. So <laughs> I'm working on savings. I Plus, might I I didn't want to. Sonia, I might have a fence for you. We'll talk about that later because I have oh. a fence stored at my uncle's house in up in Jersey. Get out! And I need I need a place for it, and I think I think your place might be the place for it. I I did a Philly garden, Philadelphia flower show garden a couple of years ago. Oh my God! Get out! Yeah, and we we we're did doing it. it this year, and I'm panicked. Oh, oh, you'll it'll be great. It'll be great. But anyway, we'll talk about the fence later because I'm feeling okay. that you need my fence. Oh my gosh! So yeah, so I have like you know what I did the backyard is huge and my sister and my niece were living here with me and my parents live with me and my my son you know covid he's here for now <laughs> it's for, only for a couple more Family. months it's like this right now <laughs> yeah. on. and um i needed a, a space for my niece to be able to play so i took cattle panel and created this yard plus my son has uh, a dog so 
you know, we needed a place for her tie to be put so she could also have space that's, that's safe to play in. So I used cattle panel and made this like semi-circle, half circle that connected with the patio. And I created a foodscape around it. So it also provided a border um, that gave a little privacy because, you know, she likes to strip sometimes. And <laughs> during the summer, you know, she wants to get in her pool. Yeah. And she'll just do it and it, whatever happens, happens. So I was like, you know what? This way we have a little privacy and she can just be her and be free. <laughs> She's three years old now. Um, well, I, I think I think anyone under eight stripping straight. Like, just let it go. Like, you all Isn't also a very European thing? Like, the kids are just, like, naked all summer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And then here in America, it's like, why? It's just, it's the body. Like, my son said when he was doing art, and he would be like, Mom, it's just the body. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I know. Um, so I literally took seeds, like, everything that I knew that I wanted to put there, threw them in a jar, shook it up, and just started sprinkling. My friend was with me. She was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm, I'm sowing seed. She was like, no, you have to plan it out. And I was like, nah, man. Like I said, nature did this for millions of years before us. Nature has done it. What is so <laughs> beautiful about pretty square feet. <laughs> it's always more beautiful than you think it's going to be. Like, yeah. like nature's just going to be more beautiful than you can think of it in your mind. Right. So I am all about like, like how you're saying, I am all about that unstructured gardening. And with Brie now doing mm -hmm. that um, with Jim Putnam, she does the uh, no rules gardening because she's the one who taught me that. She was like, nature has existed and didn't need us to plow certain things. And oh, it has to have this and it has to have that. Nature just does what she does. And that's how I, I garden. And that's how I'm teaching these other kids. It's, which is like, empowering. Yeah right and i tell them there's no there really are no rules and if something dies then you're a gardener because i'll show them i'm like you want to see my stuff let me show you what i have that's dying <laughs> like i know that this plant is not going to make it i'm trying to save it but i really know it's not going to make it and it's okay you know and just being able to teach people that we don't have to be so structured and it's okay. Like it now, now I'm, I'm into gar garden design. Like I look at this journey and I'm like, when the heck did that happen? <laughs> like, like my friends, my closest friends will be like, who are you? They, when they, especially when they see me outside, they're like, what? we don't know you. <laughs> who is this person who wouldn't touch soil? Like I used to have a blog called Shoes to Seeds because I was like, I've got red bottoms sitting in my closet that I will never wear again because now everything I own, if I can't garden in it, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> you can go to the Philly Gala in your like, <laughs> not, not going to happen. I'm going to show up with some boots because there's like like some some combat boots because that's what I need to garden. <laughs> I always laugh and I'm my, like my little niece she'll garden uh, in her like little tutu though so you can yes. put all fancy clothes on <laughs> that's what I do with my niece I'm like honey let's get out here and let's be cute let's just be cute and garden and I often wear a dress over my jeans because if I like didn't wear yes. nice fun dresses because I'm gardening I'd never wear them so you know like Brie, Brie goes out in her little dresses and she's like I just love it because it's so free exactly. I, I go out I have my like my stretchy pants or just shorts whatever but I always have on boots and I'm like I, I always laugh and say I need to get a deal with like either Timberland or somebody because I go through some boots I have this pair of I bought this pair of Tommy Hilfiger beautiful suede boots they're now garden boots my sister was like, what are you doing? Like, she sees me out there. She's like, you got on your health and boots. And I was like, and your garden boots. <laughs> yeah, but it's gotta be, it's, you gotta buy things that are garden proof that like can handle that because you know, you're like, Everything you're perfect. walking from that your car to your house and you're going to get distracted and have to pick the blackberries and pull out that weed. <laughs> everything. That's why I laugh. And I'm like, everything has become garden wear. Everything has become a garden shoe. Welcome, um, welcome to. <laughs> it, it, 
I would, love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. This this has really been just something that I every night I go to bed and I like you know I meditate. I'm 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 into that and I sit and I give thanks because I'm always thankful that this is the course my life has taken because it's so I'm so happy. Yeah. And there's nothing like, like that's, I'm still that teacher and I'm still that teacher that is carrying something to other people. And I can say, this is, this is a way out. Food and food equity is way so in, really. Equalizer. It's an equalizer. It is a game changer because if you are healthy and you're eating healthy and you're in control, because so many people are people who have been stomped down for hundreds of years, for centuries, and told you're not, you're not, you're less, you're less. When you have that control of that soil and that ground, and you have planted something, and you are in control of its growth and its harvest, and it's you, it becomes you. There's nothing more powerful than that. There's nothing more powerful. The Like, we are of the earth. And it's returning to the earth. It's reclaiming yeah. our birthrights as humans placed here to be ambassadors of the earth. And this is what we are moving a whole generation to. So my goal and my goal, especially here in New Jersey, and I am, I had that little chat with Cory Booker. I, I watched your chat. And I was really holding my tongue because I don't see him in South Jersey a whole lot, unless it's a photo op. And I am holding his feet to the fire. I email his team once a week. And I was told like, oh, you, we got to like, you know, you got to go through this process. You got to go through that process. I'm like, I know he is busy, but I'm a constituent. I voted for him. When he threw his hat in the ring to be president, I went right behind him. I'm like, I'm going with my Jersey guy. I'm standing behind him. So as his constituent, we need his help. And we need everyone's help. Because I believe that we need to level the playing field. What is accessible to people in marginalized communities, churches and schools? Every church, every school should have accessible food. If you can't put it in the ground, then we can do raised beds. We can do containers. We yeah, can get- You gotta think about bottles. like pollution, yeah. metal. Think outside of the box, but we need to be feeding people. We have public spaces. We have to start rethinking There's so spaces. much wasted space. Like what you should also start thinking about, by the way, I'm I'm um one of the people I'm gonna hopefully talk to soon um is a guy in Seattle where they're taking okay. old parking lots from like strip malls yes. and stuff and they're just making gardens out of that. And that's what we should be doing. I love that. We we need so to so much wasted sure. space. All those and old I, parking lots. I even said, I was like, I'm ready to battle HOAs. I think that this is ridiculous. You know, I'm looking up like local laws about your lawn and what it has to look like. And, you know, you can't have a garden in the front of your house. I think these things are changing. Though, because I remember when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, I grew up in this little poshy town uh, called Fairhaven, speaking Red Bank and Rumson. Yeah, yeah, you know where that is. Okay, great. And <laughs> I wanted a chicken. And at that point, like yep. you were not allowed to have Heaven any, any a animals or chickens. And, and I was like, what right. is this? Like, right, right. And, and that has changed so radically in. Well, you would think it has changed, but you still have a lot of communities that aren't allowing this. And that's what we have to change. Yeah. We but I, I think the time is really ripe. It is. And the, the way people are, the way people embraced gardening through the pandemic has been beautiful. Now, I didn't think it was so beautiful when I couldn't get soil last year. And I went on social media and I was like, I need one of my friends who has soil to give me some soil because I'm out of topsoil. Um, 
you could so what a luxury situation to be in that people are so excited yeah. about gardening that we yeah. don't have enough of this stuff exactly and to have people that are like you know some of my friends have been like i can't get seeds and i was like i knew this was coming so as soon oh as this God, was was out in December, i was like bur, 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 bur. i was i was stalking the the seed companies and you thank have to get your kids saving seeds or are you doing that already yeah Oh yeah, no, they save seeds. They are, and it's, what's funny, um, they, they have a really high markup when they want to sell them and I have to shut them down. And I'm like, your kids. I know you're, I know you're cute. <laughs> you know, However, what, they're savvier business people than you are. Like, <laughs> like going. They really are because kids, my third graders did, uh, we taught, I taught a lesson on economics. And we were talking about natural resources and whatnot and food miles. And we got into all of that. These kids went out into the garden. They harvested garlic chive seeds and were like, well, we're going to sell them five. And I had them research. I had them research price points and everything. Well, we're going to sell them five for $10. And I was like, I love y'all, but I'm not buying them five for $10. I can get, but they are right because they have their work cute kids markup. Right. <laughs> they do it and they it's sold like them. Girl Scout cookies and stuff. People paying seven yes. pounds because they, they're like, oh, it's a kid. Yeah. <laughs> the kids sold them. And then with the money, we were able to go to Longwood Gardens. Like I had already planned that trip, but we were able to um, actually purchase their lunches. So oh. they didn't have to bring lunches and they got to have like the nice you okay. know, Longwood garden under the tent lunch. So it was really, really special. So, you know, in teaching kids this, and when the high tunnel is up, that's one of the things that I want to do. I want to turn this property into a farm learning space. This was farm property. And the house that I have across the, I have to send you a picture. The house across the street from me was the original farm house. And there's like acres. It's, it's like a nice, I think they said it's almost a two mile uh, radius from that house. Oh, wow. And that is, that was all farmland. So this house sits adjacent to the original, the original farmhouse. And, and see, you didn't even know when you were buying this, this was all gonna, know. didn't even know. And I'm like, look at how the universe works. Mm -hmm. Put me right here. Yeah. So, and then I hear the stories from the neighbors and especially my one neighbor who was like, she grew up right here. And, you know, she was like, yeah, our house was the first one built on land that they sold and they were still working this farm. So she's like in her nineties and she tells me the history of all it of this. It was a farm. Like it just was a farm. And it's gonna be, yeah. Right. So I, my goal is to turn this back into a learning farm. Oh, how exciting. Um, like to, to make this like block garden project hub. I want kids to be able to come here great with, you know, kids and families to come here and learn and grow. And, the and kids how can they spread that to their. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the kids that we have working with us, we're teaching them currently how to grow seedlings. Like we have an educational program that we don't really publicize it because we're in beta but it's called um, Their Place. It's called Their Place. And it's just, you know, kids who need a different type of learning environment. It's and, kind of making like a third place. So right. Like, mm. Right. So um, that's why we said it's theirs. It's child-led. So the kids, you know, there are some things that I'm like, they're non-negotiables, math, reading, <laughs> non-negotiables. However, I've got like a kid who's almost fluent in German and, you know, we have a little girl who is five, but she's working on first grade math, but all of the kids that we, who we work with have um, learning disabilities. So these are kids that, you know, the um, virtual learning wasn't great for them. And there have been times we've had to learn virtually, but I make sure I see each kid one-to-one. -one. So it's not like a whole class. It's, it's literally personalized for you because I'm still an educator. <laughs> so I'm still that teacher. Um, so, and, and now we're, we're branching into other grants where, you know, I'm helping 
create gardens and build gardens and rebuild, uh, redesign gardens for people who have intellectual disabilities. Because now this is a whole different thing. So when I talk about like when my back was hurting, it really made me have to stop and think, if I'm in a wheelchair, how would I be able to do this? How would I be able to get into the ground? Like I wish, like I have the ideas on like tools, but I'm like, man, I wish I was savvy enough to draw it out. The only thing I could do was talk about it. Yeah, but um, you are really good at finding the people they're up <laughs> brought out. <laughs> yeah, like I need someone to like draw the ideas out, like how we can make things more accessible. But I'm telling you, there's so much that lives in here. If it wasn't for my board members and like my staff, I, I don't know how on earth I would be able to do all of this because like in my head, I see chapters of what we do. And I would like to have chapters across the globe of the Block Garden Project. And what yeah, do you great do? Great Block Garden Project, by the way. Really oh, cool. thank you. And like I said, it goes back to the original binder, to that <laughs> binder that was just held with ideas. And like, what is this? <laughs> I have all these little notes in it. And it's so funny that I, I look at that and I'm like, it keeps me so centered because I'm like, that's where it started. And it, all it is, all we are, are about teaching people how to garden, how to yeah. feed yourself, the beauty of it, the mindfulness of it, all of the benefits that it gives and being stewards of the earth and all of yeah. it. My son calls me Moonbeam. Like he was walking past me, you know. <laughs> He's like, like, like a plant comes in the house. He's like, really? <laughs> Cause I know, but this is all, this, this is all part of being a gardener. Like you just gonna yeah. be plants and like, you'll be obsessive about it for a long time. And like, this then... is life. Like I am obsessed. I am obsessed. Um, I don't need any more seeds personally <laughs> at this moment, but when I see something like I continue to buy seeds and plant, I, it just, it's, it's life. It is just life. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh He's my like, gosh. how long are you talking? I know. I know. I'm surprised <laughs> Luna hasn't come in here. Like, um, ma. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we're going to slowly have to round this off and we're just going to yeah. have to do a follow up when you're further with your block garden project and everything. Oh my gosh. But yeah, we are, we are, we are doing, we are doing some amazing work. And yeah. I wanted so nice to ask you about if you were pursuing this, this Longwood thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think Longwood would be a great because they're all about education too. Yeah, I, I, I am because I want to just immerse more and learn more. So I am pursuing it. I did, I did apply. <laughs> I know people there, so I'm hoping that they see my name. It's, it's, a, it's a really great program, and you'll be immersed in a world. Yeah, network that will be. Involved. The only thing I was concerned about was do like making like do I have to live there because I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. outside of there. They have a program, and they're like, oh, we provide housing. I'm like, do I have to live there because I can? I'm good. Well, I think a lot of people who do it, and yeah, yeah. then you need to see like what type of things if there's like a part-time thing or whatever available well, I don't even a lot care. of people like they go on like full-on internship and so like yeah. you like yeah it's a bit immersive I'm gonna go with whatever they tell me if they say if I get in and they say yes I'm gonna be like bet I'm, yeah in some ways it's kind of this crazy great opportunity to just like yeah <laughs> people are coming home too oh, here she comes here she comes <laughs> you heard a puppy did you hear a puppy it's okay mama it's okay. Were you sleeping? Like now she here she like is. I heard someone. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. That's the garden puppy. When we brought her home, the first thing she did literally was she sniffed out gar uh, carrots in the garden and ate them. And I was like, "You are a garden puppy." Um, but yeah, that is really. I I just want to learn as much as I can. So, but don't block, underestimate like, what you already right. know. And keep your main goals because I think you've got some momentum in this in this block yeah. garden project and all these people reaching out. So make sure you keep that momentum and don't get okay. like, because I can see you being like, I need to learn more. I need to learn more, and like under underestimating how much you already know about where you need to be going. 
thank you. I, I know, like, I put that post up and people have said that. They're like, and Brie even was like, you know, quite a bit. And, you know, she's like, don't, like, go on what you know. And you, you, that, you like, know how to find things out. Yeah, yeah. And that's, like, like, people are going to school for the first time. Like, they're mostly learning, like, how do I learn to ask the questions to find the answer? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And so the, the shift that I did after that discussion and reading all the things I was, I was taking grad classes and I was like, you know what, I'm switching it up. Um, so I'm getting a certificate in, um, social emotional learning because I'm like, that is a garden. That is one of the things that I do. I talk about the calming effects of it and how it should be another reason why it needs to be in schools, especially our schools with high rates of special education. Um, and so I said, I'll get my certificate in that. And then I'll, um, you know, hopefully I'll get this long one. <laughs> but I, I, one of the things that I have to do is I have to learn how to market myself. Um, I, I'm not believing you're not good at this already. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Are you kidding? Like, like as like, I'll you do got Ahmed to come and he brought his A team. And then you have like the whole of like New Jersey and the world coming to build your little, you know what? That's because if it's four kids, I, I told you, I'm like a dog with a bone. I, I, I will do anything for the benefit of kids. I will put myself out there. I will shout it out. I put a letter in my file. I don't care. Like I will do what I have to do for the sake of kids. Um, but it's like, for me, you know, someone asked me to speak and they're like, what's your fee? And I was like, okay, well, we'll talk about all this stuff some other time. Talk to me, <laughs> but yeah, no, you, you, you yeah. got to learn this world because you're, yes, but, that um, part, I'm, like, Ooh. I'm not, so, yeah. I'm not worried. Cause you get, you've got a lot of good stuff to say and I'm glad you're doing the Philly. What, what you have a garden design for the Philly flower show. We, ha we have a designer, um, for the Philly flower show. Um, but we found out like a month ago, um, someone dropped out. So we were put in and it's like, okay, there's a lot of plants we can get. How the heck do you force like tomatoes to, to be in bloom by oh. June? <laughs> Look, we have con how, are you in contact with um, Peace Valley Farm, Lloyd? Yeah. Yeah. Ask him, how do we grow tomatoes to, to get them ready for, he knows how to do this stuff. He's, okay. Okay. I will. I'm going to ask because. And if he can help you specifically, he'll tell you who you should be in contact with. Oh my God. People who've done these shows and it's a whole science and art and they, they know how to do that. Oh no. And we're, we're newbies. So every week we sat in on a meeting and we were like, we're listening to the questions and we were like, oh my God, what did we say yes to? <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to do it on your own. There's just all sorts of people who will come and help. So okay. thank you. Thank you so much. So Are I'm, you doing it this year? What? And okay. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to lose the country. <laughs> like, that's uh, true. Our that vaccination is, true. is not the fastest and I'm not in any risk group. So I will, I will travel again when I'm vaccinated and that might yeah. well be fall. Um, so I would love to come, but I will come some other time. Yes. Uh, when when you're in Jersey, we will exactly. connect. I'll come down and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to text you some stuff about fences because I, I think, no. I think that might be good. And um, we'll be in contact. So if people want to find you, do you have a website for the block garden stuff? I do. I do. It's www.bullock, B-U-L-L-O-C-K, garden, G-A-R-D-E-N, project, P-R-O-J-E-C-T, dot org. Bullockgardenproject.org. They can find me across social media at NJ Garden Teacher. New yeah, Jersey Garden. a great name too. And then um, at Bullock Garden across everything else. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, I would love for people to get in touch. And especially if you're in the Netherlands, my God, send me some pictures. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, and I'm also going to say, I have um, a cousin who's superintendent by the Howell Township schools. Yeah. I'm going to try and get him excited. He, I can see this being up. I think I talked with them at one point. Oh, it could be. I I don't know what happened, but I think, I think that they were in connection with me at one point because I was like, yeah, I'll drive up there. 
Yeah, because it's not that far. Gosh, no, it's not that far. It's Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch. And I'm really excited about what you're doing. Thank you so much. I'm so like honored. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm gonna go pay attention to you and my dog and my mom again. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about Sonia, I encourage you to look at her website, bullockgardenproject.org, and also to follow her on various social media, including Instagram at, at New Jersey Garden Teacher. Also, she's going to have a garden at the Philadelphia Flower Show, which this year is in June, June 5th to June 13th in Philadelphia. So if you're in the region and have the opportunity to go touch base and see what she's doing there, I encourage you to do so. Thanks.